Hi everyone, welcome to Perfections. Today we are talking about Middle Eastern perfumes which are affordable. Here we have Teriyak Bella Tafa, which is a Cantan Pish creation. So, you know, the creator of Delina, Werner Critique, uh, Hibiscus Majad, uh, Very Good Girl, a lot of nice perfumes that women love, uh, Guidance by Amouage, and so on and so forth. So this is Teriak Bella Tafa. As you can see, this is uh, this powdery, uh, beigey, pinkish type of bottle. It's pretty stunning, the bottle itself, in my honest opinion. As you can see, I actually quite used it. So I was looking for a caramel perfume, so I was very, you know, much into this, buying this one. To me, instead, I don't smell a lot of caramel. In the opening, I smell some powdery, almondy, uh, maybe um, amaretto-like, so more on the apricot side of things dark vetiver type of uh, opening so it's very dark in the opening i mean i guess that what i smell is a smoky dark vetiver plus those fruits i mentioned is what the other people say it's caramel it's not caramel to my nose but then it dries down and it stays like this kind of smoky vetiver for a while i mean you know that kind of um, vetiver that Canton Beach really loves and then it, it's, it dries down to some almondy, sandalwoody, slightly powdery dry down which is very cozy, very nice so it's kind of the opposite of what a perfume would be normally you know be bright in the opening and then dries down to something a bit darker a bit woodier I feel like this one yeah okay it's probably woody with the sandalwood in the dry down I'm not sure whether sandalwood is a note or not but that's what I smell it starts dark and then it gets you know bright kind of thing you know if I think of colors I would think of dark gray for the opening white for the dry down so yeah so that's my take on Teriyak by Latafa uh, performance is good I mean it lasts on, uh, on clothes for you know one or two days and also you know in general it has good performance yeah. that's that's not an object it's very sweet you know it has a lot of sweetness um like a kind of sparkling sweetness beautiful very beautiful but i don't smell caramel as such then okay since we are talking of uh Cantan Beach creations now we go for another dupe of one of his creations which is Nar flare narcotique by ax nihilo and this is the maison alhambra dupe a narcotic flower so let me show you keep it close up this one looks like not bad i mean i paid this bottle less than ten dollars so you can imagine so the perfume opens up very bright um you can have, you have something also citrusy probably slightly so mm, fruity and then it has this uh, kind of you know what this vibrant uh, pow musky powderiness that Fleur Narcotique has? It does not get to the point of Fleur Narcotique, the original, of course. But it's very pleasant. And it has also that uh, ethereal creaminess, you know, like uh, um, fat-free milk. <laughs> yeah, fully skimmed. That's really nice. Oh, it, it lasts long and projects for long. Um, it's, it's pretty linear, I mean, the evolution is uh, kind of short-lived, meaning that it opens like this and then uh, maybe in one hour it gets to uh, this uh, kind of creamy, floral, musky perfume and stays that way for long and projects like that for very long. So, to be honest with you, for the price, I, have, I can't complain, I can't complain. Then another one, which is something that I was actually disappointed by, let me say it. It's this one by Swiss Arabian. I mean, the perfume per se is nice, it's just not my cup of tea. So this is Spirit of Valencia. Uh, the Valencia and the cheese, so this is kind of the extra de parfum line. So you have Casablanca, Valencia, Venice, and I think uh, there used to be also Dubai, but it's impossible to find now. And I think that's the most interesting one, which I'm really annoyed that I cannot find it. <laughs> so anyway, these were pretty expensive, at least in Europe. Uh, they were running around 80, 90 euros and I could find this one for like $27 something so I grabbed it so I was hoping that this would be a nicer version of the Kirke Herba Pura Dupe which is Valencia from the cheaper line it's not, it's not and that was a bummer so this is some sort of, uh, I don't know 
masculine leaning uh, fragrance like um, i've heard people saying guys saying uh this uh, is a ysl uh, male fragrance uh, dupe so yeah if you're a male and you like to wear you know masculine traditionally masculine fragrances this could be for you but not for me unfortunately then i have let's go for a brighter note then we have Rua 29 Notturno, which means nocturnal in Italian. So this is essentially a Middle Eastern brand made in, in uh, uh, United Arab Emirates. And uh, this is essentially a dupe for Amouage Love Tube Rose. It's, let's say, an inspiration. This brand, I don't think they make outright dupes. They make inspirations. But they're, this one is very close, okay? I also have the Fleur Narcotique inspiration, which is a bit like a different twist. Uh, but in this case, I think they're very close. So essentially, uh, Love Tuberose by Amouage, for those who don't know, uh, is um, Gardenia Tuberose perfume with whipped cream and vanilla. So this is what you're gonna get. The opening is a bit greener, then it dries down to this, uh, to me, mostly Gardenia. I'm a big lover of Tuberose, okay? And also I love Gardenia. I think that perfume leans more on the Gardenia rather than on the Tuberose but it's a gardenia substanti substantiated with uh, the whipped cream and the vanilla. Uh, so, you know, because it's thicker due to the cream, it may, it may smell like tuberose, but to be honest with you, I feel like it's more gardenia than tuberose, but both are in there, okay? So, and this is Notturno and it's a dupe for that scent profile. Now, last but not least at all, we have a perfume that you can definitely find in London and, of course, Saudi Arabia, okay? Um, but I'm not quite sure where else. I think also in Paris. And there might be an American... Oh, yeah, there's an American website for this. So this is Black Star for Her by Abdul Samad Al Qurashi. So this is a super sweet, almost... Uh, um, it's so nice. Um, let, me, let me say it. Okay. Uh, I think this has some black currant thing. It has okay. It has some similarities with La Vie Belle, but it's not a dupe at all. Um, and it, it also has some similarities with the perfume from Garlan uh, La Petite Robe uh, Noir, but the the blue one, the intense version. Okay, the one with blackberry. It was it was it blackberry? Okay, so maybe it's blackberry in here. Anyway, so there are these berries. Then uh, there's this cotton candy-like type of uh, sugary um, fluffiness to the perfume. Um, I think there's some, and in this fluffiness, uh, sugary thing, there's patchouli as well, uh, which is made sweet. And there's a lot of tonka, so there are almondy touches. I think there's iris as well for the added powderiness. And of course there's oud, because of course this is a brand from Saudi Arabia, so they make a massive use of wood. Not all of their perfumes have wood, but this one does have it. And it's slightly, it's like ever so slightly barnyardy. I love it. I mean, I love this perfume. I usually don't like barnyard wood, so it's not that bad in this perfume, okay? It's totally bearable and it go, it makes uh, all of the perfume creamy and, um, how can I say, well-rounded. Uh, it's very soft. So. I really like this perfume, especially for the fall and uh, winter season, or maybe for a cold spring night. And that's it. Uh, let me know if you know them, and see you in the next one. Bye!